Push it real good. No. Oh, you should. So all that stress and emotion will uh, will need to bleed out somehow, and this is a, an excellent opportunity to rock a little bit with you guys yeah. uh, tomorrow night, and uh, you should have a. Quite a few excited folks that will uh, come out and uh, support you because you guys are definitely supporting us and we really appreciate you coming by and doing this. started its life in the 1980s as an original cargo hauling C-130. Uh, they came from the Air National Guard and these were retrofitted to uh, basically attach all the weapons. We see you if we looked up. Uh, it depends. You're gonna shoot us, yes. Like um, you. probably not. Really? Uh, because it all depends on the altitude you're flying at. You'd be able to hear us probably. If we like if we were getting ready to shoot in your general direction, you would hear us. Disconnection and after all you said in time. No one's gonna That's out Andre Lawrence. I'm with the New Jersey Guard by way of Brooklyn, New York. Oh. I'm the MWR Corolla. I'm the one that uh, kind of coordinates the, uh, this command call and your unit visits. I think after this, you'll be going to the EST trainer. Trainer, so um, set that up. And I have, I like my job. <laughs> Drop the target, so when you lock and load, it comes up, pow, you go. 
put it down and wait for the next one. The trick is, it's not going to be slow, it's going to be really fast. Y'all ready? Per target, you got 20, 20 targets coming up. Pop, 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 pop. Everybody ready? Yeah. See, far said, drop your mag out. We got 20. Man, you ain't no joke. You ain't no joke. I'll tell you what, y'all feel comfortable with that? Yeah. Who thinks they can shoot left hand? Left uh. hand. Oh wow. I got 13. Who got 20? Nobody. Who got 19? Who got 18? Woo, that's what I'm talking about. Come on, look. Who that? like missions we do, uh, we cover a wide variety of pretty much anything that the Army needs us to do, the role they need us to fill, the Black Hawk's going to be the one that fills it. I wonder what all these red buttons do. We can go from sling loading a Humvee to doing a resupply with just a bag full of water and MREs to guys stuck out in the desert, or we can come down to having assault missions with the 11 guys in the back, fully combat loaded, ready to go to a fight. Yeah, you're usually the left seat where the pilot in command will sit. It's the guy that's in charge of the entire helicopter making all the big decisions. Uh, we basically uh, use that to operate our weapon systems. So if you can go ahead and place your hands up there. That's pretty cool. You guys got a CD player in here? <laughs> Took my time without you to forget you. I tried my best to let the days erase the nights. I was never gonna let you, never gonna let you get the best of me. But you showed up. Depends on what you say. <laughs> that pedal. Good. Just hang it on. Please. <laughs> Don't let me go. This particular dog is a lovely one. I always like to just show that he can jump, how high he can jump. He always looks at you. Once he's outside of his kennel, he's a sweetheart. <laughs> Some like people in his kennel. On the outside, y'all won't be able to hear nothing. No, he doesn't, he doesn't like people when he's in his kennel. Did, did yeah. you show you Alexander, the, the alpha dog up there in the front? The uh -huh. first dog? That's the bad dog right oh, there. Oh, really? Yeah, he's the one that'll to jack your ass up. So. <laughs> one of the best.
It's all about making it fun and positive. Yeah. It, years ago, training a military working dog, you should be just beat them into submission and they figure it out. It's figured out along the lines that, hey, if they're happier and they're having a better time, they seem to listen a lot more. Listen, they learn a lot faster. So now it's all about positive, having fun. Go give them that little bit of toy, play with it. He's just trying to please him. That's all he's trying to do. They can be stubborn. They're just like three-year-old kids. But all the dogs you've seen here were pretty much, they got here when they were two, three years old, and they'll be here till, till their end. service out here. Hey, out the section. Say hello. Say hello to the darling break. Give him a hoo-yah. The average age out here is probably about 21 years old with adult responsibilities in a dangerous place. So this is Nothing else on this base matters. Nothing. All the MWR, all the bands, all the great Gucci communication stuff, none of it matters if they don't do their job. So we, we have a lot of trust in these young men and women that they do their jobs and they do it well. And it's long, shitty hours. And you know what? They, uh, they get it done. But there's, and the great thing about it is 90, 95% of them get it done today and come back and get it done every single day, yeah. right? And they don't ask for much, just know that you give a shit about it. That's what they want. So, we're really grateful for them. All right, I appreciate you guys coming out. What appreciate time is it? Man. I got you a little ahead of schedule, right? All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you so hey, much. Thank you guys for coming out. Pleasure to meet you. Absolutely. Okay. Sharpies.
Gone. Now you're true camp counseling. Never had it. Camp. Four and eight. I'll just take sleeve things. You don't have things you can sleep on. I'm the camp counselor today. I had to check it out. I think it's the... Yeah, I'm a reservist, and my civilian job, I work at Johns Hopkins, and um, I also work with the Applied Physics Lab, and my whole clinical research is dedicated to providing advanced technologies for people with traumatic injuries. And believe it or not, he's a retired captain, um, he served with the CB Battalion, he served on the Mercy, and he's really one of the greatest mentors of my life. He got in a really terrible accident during my chief year as I was training to be a surgeon. It uh, left him quadriplegic. I mean, he was actually so sick, we weren't even allowed to contact the family for about a year and a half. Wow. wow. So he ends up Facebooking me, hey, I've been following you. It's wonderful technology that you've been working with. Is there any chance I could participate? So I actually tried to arrange for him to go from Phoenix to Baltimore, and that's where I practice now. And he wanted to do it, but then his wife secretly called me and says, Albert, there's no way in hell we were going to get Tom from Phoenix to Baltimore as a quadriplegic that cares way too much. I know he wants to do this, but we just can't do it. He goes, you're going to have to tell him that we can't. You're going to have to let him down, Joe. Maybe he can't go there, but maybe I can bring my whole team to him. So that's what the Kickstarter campaign was. We are starting this uh, fundraiser to bring all the technology. It's crazy. All the stuff that I've worked for right now. We have um, integrated these modular prosthetic instruments. It's the most advanced prosthetic device ever developed. But we're mounting them to a wheelchair. We're using a Kinex that you can buy at like a your local Walmart for $100 as computer vision. You guys have played those games, right? Like oh, yeah. you can spike and volleyball, yeah. but we're using that as um, computer vision. Using that same technology, you project out to the environment. You can actually not only pick up body movements, but pick, pick up objects. So we use that as the eyes. We have come up with like a Google Glasses interface where now Tom, even though he's a quadriplegic, he can look down at objects within his environment and using eye control picks things up and like take trains and perform activity. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> <laughs>